What's up, y'all? It's your boy, eBay Predictions in the building. I'm going to be talking about UFC 253. Uh, hey, it, it's it's one of the most hyped up cards of the year. It's kind of funny. Uh, it's not the greatest card of the year, but I think it's because of the main event. Uh, it's just, yeah, like people are really hyped up about it. So, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm enjoying doing this video. Uh, but we start off the card with uh caitlin vera versus Sajara eubanks this was made pretty early uh it's just a late replacement uh, caitlin vera was i think supposed to fight uh, marina maru so it's it's kind of interesting they're doing this but let's look at the stats caitlin vera 10 and 1 number 7 uh, bantamweight in the world fights out of brazil age 29 height 5 8 and reaches 68 so Jara eubanks 6 and f uh 6 and 4 uh number 13 bantamweight in the world fights out of maryland age 35 Height 5'4", and a recent 67. Uh, in terms of uh, recent wins, Caitlin Vieira's most recent one was against uh, Kat Zongo in 2018, UFC 222. And uh, Sajara Eubanks' most recent one was against uh, Julia uh, Avila. Uh, Caitlin, Vieira's, Caitlin Vieira's most recent loss was to Irene Aldana via KO. And uh, Sajara Eubanks' most recent loss was to Beth Cochea. So this is a really interesting matchup. Um... If you would have told me this matchup maybe like before Sajar Eubanks beat Julia Villa, I probably would have went Caitlin Vera. But just seeing how Sajar Eubanks was able to handle Julia Villa, I don't know if it's, oh man, it might be like some recency bias, but Caitlin Vera is coming off a really bad knockout. Um, and it was not good at all. It was one of them knockouts who were like, yo. You know, for if it was a dude, you'd be saying, like, a, it's a life-changing knockout or a career-altering knockout that she suffered, you know? Uh, and girls usually don't get knocked out like that. I've see, and I just, I see some girls, and they're not the same, you know? Uh, Carolina Kovacic, like, prime example. After she got knocked out by Jessica Andrade, she went on a four-fight losing streak, right? Like, that shit was sick, man. Like, I just, man, I felt sorry for her, man. Uh, like... She just wasn't the same, and that was a girl that fought for a title, and like before the Jessica Andrade uh, fight, she she had beat Felice Herring. Like she was like winning, she was like a top five girl. She had, uh, you know, she had a win over Rose Namajunas and stuff like that. Like she's just now she's just losing to everybody, you know. Um, but yeah, it, it's just one of those things, and that's how I kind of feel about Kaylin Vera in this situation. I think Sajara Eubanks uh, is wrestling. Is gonna set her uh, apart from Caitlin Vera, and I think she's gonna be able to beat her. I think she might take this man. Sajar's making a run. I like Mark Henry. I like the people uh, that she's surrounded by. So, I think she has a really good chance to win this fight. Um, next fight, uh, Kadias, uh, Erb Magev, uh, Arga, no Erga Magedev, or Madev. I'm sorry if I'm butchering his name. Versus uh, Danilo Marquez. Uh, Kadias comes in eight and three. Uh, fights out of Russia, age twenty five, height six three, reaches seventy eight. Um, uh, Marquez is nine and two. Fights out of Brazil, age thirty four, height six six, tall dude, and reaches seventy seven. Um, uh, in terms of recent wins, uh, Kadias's most recent one was against uh, Rafael Kinjuzik, uh, I think that's how you say that guy's name, and uh, Marquez's most recent one was against uh, Clintian uh, Cantino. And their most recent losses is against uh, Roman uh, De, La, De La Diaz. I do. I cannot read right now. And Danilo Marquez's most recent one was against uh, Myron uh, Dennis. Um, here's what I got to say uh, about Cadiz. He's on a three-fight losing streak, I think, right? If I'm, I'm positive he's on a three-fight losing streak. Um, he's a, he came in the USC with some hype. And a lot of people are talking about his Sambo ability and stuff like that. Uh, Marquez, he's, I think he's a UFC newcomer. I think he's going to be making his debut. I haven't seen a lot of tape on him. I've seen only a little bit, and I wasn't f able to find a few. I just was only able to find one fight. And from what I'm seeing, he's a grappler. He's a tall, tall guy, though. So, for you know, at first I was going to go Marquez to beat Cadiz, but you know, this guy's coming off a three-fight losing streak. Um... I know he wants to go win, and I know Marquez is. If he had fight IQ, he wouldn't. Or he'd he'd really what he'd do to Cadiz is what Ed Herman did. He'd really just butcher him in the clinch. But um, I think uh, Marquez is is gonna be stupid. Uh, and 
I I just have a, a feeling that uh, I think I think he's gonna I think he's gonna involve himself a lot in the grappling, and I think Adesis is gonna take over. And I think just because he's coming off the three fight losing streak, he has the sambo background. I think he should win this. So yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna be going Cadiz by decision. Uh, and if I didn't say what the result for Sajar Eubanks versus Caitlin Vera is, Sajar Eubanks by decision. I got a lot of decisions on this card. Um, so I'm just letting y'all know now. Um, next fight: Jeff Hughes versus Juan Espinoza. Uh, Jeff Hughes comes in ten and three. Uh, fights at Ohio, age thirty two, height six two. Uh, and uh, reaches 77. Juan Espinosa is 9-1. Uh, fights out of Spain. Age 39. That's something to look at. Height 6'4 and a reach of 80. In terms of recent uh, wins, Jeff Hughes is coming off a win over uh, Josh Appleton. That was in 2018. And his most recent loss was to uh, Rafael uh, Pizzesis. Um And Juan Espinosa's most uh, recent win was against Justin Frazier. And his most recent loss... Uh, was against uh, Villity uh, Mid knockoff. Uh, Juan Espinosa is hey man. He's a uh, he's a good fighter. Jeff Hughes is is, is a good fighter. They're, they're pretty. They're big boys. I'll say that. Uh, Jeff Hughes. He's a knockout artist. Uh, and Juan Espinosa is a pure grappler. He's not a traditional grappler. He's more of like a. He's kind of like he, he he's a, he does a lot of a lot of stuff. He I've seen him compete in samba. I've seen him uh, compete in uh Sing, uh, Singalese uh, wrestling. If I'm saying that right, um, yeah, he does a lot. He le- does a lot of forms of grappling. So uh, I, I can't just call him a wrestler. He's more than a wrestler. He's. I, I just. I, I. I guess I'll just call him a grappler. Uh, I think that's where this uh, fight's gonna take. He has wins over guys like Ben Sassoli on the Ultimate fi- uh, f- uh, Fighter uh, Tough Show. I think it was the 29 or 28 or whatever. Um, and I think he also beat Maurice Green too. So he got some decent wins over some decent guys. Uh, I think you know Jeff Hughes is really gonna have to be really looking for a punch in the clinch. Um, he just knocks a lot of guys out. You know, honestly, he doesn't really. Yeah, he's he's more of a knockout artist. Uh, I I think Juan Espinosa is gonna take him down and take him to deep waters. Um, and yeah, I think I think that's what he's gonna do. Next fight: uh, William Knight uh, versus Alisco Kamora. Uh, William Knight, eight and one, fights out of uh, Connecticut, age thirty-two, height five ten, um, and a reach of seventy-three. Uh, Kamora is uh, six and zero, oh, fights at Ohio, age twenty-five, a height of six one, and a reach of seventy-five. In terms of uh, recent wins from William Knight, he's coming off a win over uh, Cody uh, Brindage, and his most recent loss was to Tufan uh, Nochkwi, um, and. Kamor's coming off a win over Justin Ledet, and he's obviously undefeated, so he hasn't lost. Uh, this is really a fight I've been kind of going back and forth with. Uh, I feel like uh, Alice Kamor is uh, the more talented fighter out of the two. In terms of what he's able to do all around in his game, you know, I feel like he can, he can grapple a little more. I feel like he has a better kicking game. I feel like even, even technically in his boxing is a little more crisp. But William Knight, he just has a lot of fucking power, and he's so swole, man. The guy's really swole, so I've been kind of jumping around. At first, I was going to go William Knight via first-round KO, but and then I really, really thought about it. I really watched some tape on uh, Kimura, and I just looked at what William Knight, some old tape on him, and I seen that he's been caught in some bad, like not bad grappling situations, but he's been it's been really easy uh, to turn him over, and I just don't think his game... Is that good? Uh, I know he he has more fights, but I, and like if I if I was to really say like in terms of what he he does, I, I, I in one fight I seen he was just really the guy sweeped him really easily or took him down really easily, so you know and he dealt with some adversity earlier in his career, um, so I, I'm gonna have to be going more by decision. I think um, I know a lot of people are going William Knight via KO. I just don't think. I, I don't know, man. I, I think Kamora is going to be able to fucking uh, overcome that. You know, he trains with the heavyweight champion of the world, and Steve A. Miocic. Uh, I think, um, you know, and he has his, even though I know a lot of people look at his kicks, uh, his boxing looks really crisp. You know, if you look at some of his amateur fights, uh, it, it looks like he knows what he's doing from there. So uh, I'm, I'm going to be going to Elizabeth Kamora, man, uh, on that one. 
Uh, but next fight, uh, a banger, by the way, Nate Landwehr versus Shane Young. Um, so, yeah, and I'm going Kumar via, via decision, by the way. Uh, Nate Landwehr is 14-3, uh, uh, fights at uh, Tennessee, or Clarksville, Tennessee, a height 5'9", reaches 70. Um, Shane Young is 13-4, and four, uh, fights at Auckland, New Zealand, a uh, height 5'8", and it reaches 72. In terms of recent wins, Nate Landwehr is coming off a, rec- uh, a win over Darren Elkins. And in terms of recent loss, he's also coming off a... Uh, his most recent loss was to Herbert Burns. Shane Young's uh, most recent win was uh, Austin uh, Arnett. And his, uh, his, his most recent loss was to Alexander Volkanovsky. This is really, really... It's a hard fight for me to pick, but... Man, I was really impressed with Nate Landwehr. Even that fight with Darren Elkins was actually kind of so-so. So, you know, it is what it is there. But I was really impressed with him. Um, you know, obviously, uh, I forgot what the promotion he was in Russia. But, you know, he was a goddamn savage over there. He was just having a fucking bunch of goddamn fights, a bunch of awesome fights over there. So, you know, obviously this fight can go either way. Uh, Shane Young can win this fight too. But... I, I think Nate Landward is going to take this. Uh, I just think it's going to be via decision, but I wouldn't be surprised if, if they gave it to Shane Young. That's how, like, I, I think these guys are really, really close in terms of skill. Uh, Shane does have the reach advantage in this fight, but I'm, I'm going to be going uh, Nate Landwehr. Uh Next fight is another hard fight to pick. Brad Rydell versus uh, Alex Del Sil- uh, Silva. Uh, Brad uh, comes in 8-1, and one, fights at New Zealand, age 28, height 5-7, and reaches 71. Uh, Alex is 21-2, uh, and two, uh, fights out of Brazil, age 24, height of 5-10, and a reaches 73. Brad's uh, most recent win was against uh, Margaret Mustafa, and his most recent loss was to Abel uh, Brightese. That was a long time ago. Uh, Alex's most recent win was against... Uh, Rodrigo Vargas and his most recent loss was to Alexander uh, Volokov. So, you know this is a this is an interesting fight. Um, at first, I was going all the way with Brad based on the uh, Magad Mustafa uh, victory. Uh, he just really impressed me there. I did not think he was going to take him out like that. Not think he was going to. It was a good fight, but like he he proved a lot to me in there, and I was like, okay, this guy might have some potential. Um, he got power, obviously. Uh, when I saw his first fight, he had like that back and forth war. I forgot the guy's name, but um, you know, I, I was like, I don't know about this kid. But you know, after that one, I'm like, he might be special. Um, but the uh, you know, Alex has a lot of experience uh, from uh, from the tape I've seen. He's he has a lot of power, and he's very technical in there. You know, that's the thing. When you see a lot of guys, they look very technical. Now, is he going to be technical against Brad uh, Rydell? We're going to see. But um, I think this is a close. Close, close fight. I think, you know, uh, Alex can win this fight, but um, I'm gonna just I'm gonna have to go. Even though in, Alex has the experience in terms of fights, I just think Rydell has fought tougher competition that I know of. If I'm just being honest, that I know of, and I'm gonna be going Brad. Uh, I'm going Brad Rydell via decision, but it, it, this fight can go either way. Um, next fight. Diego Sanchez versus Jake Matthews. Diego Sanchez, uh, 30, uh, 30 and 12, uh, fights at Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, high to 5'10", Arisa 72. Jake Matthews, uh, 16 and 4, uh, fights at Melbourne, Australia. Height 5'11", Arisa 72. Uh, Diego Sanchez is coming off uh, <laughs> a win over Michelle Pierre, but honestly, his most recent win was against, a real win was against Mickey Gall. Uh <laughs> Uh, his most recent loss was to uh, Michael Chiesa, and uh, Jake Matthews' most recent win was uh, to Mill Mick. I was really impressed in that, and his most recent loss was to Anthony Rocco Martin. No shame in that. Anthony Rocco Martin's a good fighter. Uh, two years ago, I would have said this would probably be a good fight to watch. I think, you know, Diego Sanchez would have a really good chance, but um, I just don't know, man. Diego Sanchez is not the same guy he was when he was training in uh, uh, John Winkle John and stuff like that. Um, over there in uh, Albuquerque, and um, I just don't think he's the same guy, man. I'm sorry, I just don't. Uh, I think Jake Matthews uh, kind of 
Well, it's sad to say, but I think he might dominate him. I, I obviously Diego Sanchez is a really good wrestling game. Uh, he is a really good grappling game. He's shown it against Mickey Go. He's shown it against I think was it Craig White, what's his name Alex White or something like that. The, the kid that he fought on UFC two twenty eight. Uh, he looked really good there. You know, obviously that's a kid that fought Neil Magny uh, on the co main event of Darren Till versus Wonder Boy Stephen Thompson. So it's like, you know, I don't think Diego Sanchez was supposed to win that when he was with some real coaches. Diego Sanchez was a really good fighter, in my humble opinion. But after he left them, he fought Michael Kessa. But Michael Kessa is a really good fighter, right? So Kessa dominated him. And then his performance against uh, Michelle Pereira was just, uh, it was embarrassing, you know? So I just, I don't know, man. I, I Obviously, he's going to retire. Um, that's what he said after this one. But I, I hope he has a good performance against Jake Matthews. I hope he doesn't go out there and get smushed again. Um, I hope it's back and forth. Um, you know, Jake Matthews really impressed me against Emil and Mick. He, he, he did drop him. I did not expect him to have that ability. Uh, I've seen Jake Matthews lose. I've seen him lose to Kevin Lee and stuff like that. I've seen him get dominated in, the, in certain grappling situations. But um, I think I think he takes this. I think he really does. I think, I, think, I think this is, if he trains right and trains hard, you know, and if he, you know, I think he can get this victory real, real easy. Uh, no disrespect to Diego Sanchez, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, Kai Car France versus Brandon uh, Royval. Um, France is coming in twenty-one and eight, the number seven uh, lightweight in the no flyweight <laughs> in the world that fights at Auckland, New Zealand. A twenty-seven height five four and a reach of sixty-six. Uh, Brandon uh, Royval. Uh, comes in uh, 11 and 4, number 10 flyweight in the world. Uh, fights out of Colorado, age 28, um, height 5'9, and a reach of 70. Uh, in terms of recent wins, uh, France is coming off a win over Tyson Nam. Raval is coming off a win over Tim Elliott. Uh, France is coming off a loss. Uh, his most recent loss was to uh, Brandon Moreno, and Raval's most recent loss was to Casey Kennedy, uh, Kenny in 2018. Um. <sighs> This is a hard fight. This is a really, really good fight. Uh, Ravel has a really mean uh, grappling game. You know, he's uh, he's aggressive with it. You know, he he you can tell uh, he has a lot of grit and he has that grind on him. And that that Tim Elliott fight was really, really fun to watch. But you you also have to look at the fact that Tim Elliott kind of engaged in those grappling situations with Ravel and he gassed himself out a lot, going for a lot of crazy high amplitude takedowns and a lot of you know. A lot of explosive grappling uh, sequences, right? Uh, Kai Car France, um, he's he, he has really he's good striking, and you know as much as I might not be the biggest fan of uh, you know uh, is it City of Kickboxing? Yeah, City of Kickboxing guys. One thing I'll give them, they have really really good takedown defense for strikers, um, and most of them have have great takedown defense. I think Kai Car France uh, has the takedown defense and has the ability to keep this on the feet. And just dominate. Uh, nothing against Br uh, Brandon Royval. I think Kai Car France is going to take this. Um, I think he's just going to outwork him. He's going to sprawl, and uh, I don't want to say sprawl and brawl because he's not going to brawl. He's going to sprawl and fucking outwork him on the feet. Uh, and yeah, that's how I see this fight going. But hey, I I, I have a, I have a lot of respect for Brandon Royval. You know, you know, beating um, Tim Elliott. It's a great win. You know, it, it is. I can't I can't deny. It. I didn't think he was going to do it. So. Uh, good on him, but uh, yeah, I got Kai Car France uh, via decision. Um, I keep on forgetting to tell you, yeah. Uh, so Jake Matthews versus Diego Sanchez, that's via decision, man. I I have to do better on that. Um, and same thing with Brad Rydell versus Alex Del Silva, that's via decision too. I got those all. Uh, and then uh, Hakeem Dawudu versus Zubara uh, Tukov. Um, Hakeem comes in uh, eleven and one and one. Uh, fights out of Canada, age 29, a height of 5'8", and a reach of 72. Zubar is 19-4, and four, fights out of Moscow, Russia, age 29, a height of 5'8", and a reach of uh, 68. Um, in terms of recent wins for Hakim, he's coming off a win over uh, Julio uh, Arquez uh, via split decision, and Zubar is coming off a win over Kevin Aguilera. Uh, in terms of recent losses, Hakeem's the most recent loss to Dan uh, Danny Henry via submission, and Zubar's uh, most recent loss was to Renato Mocano. Uh, no shame in that. Mocano is a great fighter. He was he was a top five uh, featherweight uh, not too long ago. 
Uh, this is this is an awesome fight. Uh, Hakim Adawu is an awesome striker, slick guy. Uh, I love his striking. I, you know, I see some of his training clips on Instagram, um, or you know, not on Instagram, on YouTube, uh, of him hitting pads, and he's really, really good. At, he's really, really slick. Uh, but I think Zubar is going to take him down and smash him. No, no disrespect to the kid. Uh, you know, I hope he does well uh, in his career. But I, I think Zubar is uh, on on a different uh, path uh, than this kid, and um, I, I think this is. I don't know if uh, Dawudu has to fucking take that defense. And uh, Zubar, he, he fucking hits hard, too. It's not like he's no scrub. But I, I'm going Zubar via, you know, I think second-round submission. I just think he's going to uh, smush Hakeem. I think Hakeem uh, has a little bit of attitude. Uh, no disrespect. I like it. I like the attitude sometimes. But I think uh, he thinks he's better than he really is. Uh, and I think Zubar is going to humble him. Um, so we get to the title fights. The title fights I have breakdowns for. Uh, but I'll tell you what I'm going with. Uh, for Juan Blahovic versus Dominic Reyes, I'm going to be going Juan Blahovic uh, via four, I think fourth round submission. Um, I have a I have a big breakdown, 15 minutes. So go check that out. Go watch the breakdown. I'm not going to explain or this or that. So it, it is what it is. N- next fight, uh, Israel Adesanya versus Paula Costa. I am going Paula Costa via fourth round. Uh, TKO, you know, um, that that's the what I'm going with. Um, I I have a goddamn twenty minute breakdown on why I feel the way I feel. Uh, go watch that video. I'm I, I just it, what? Yeah, go watch that video. There's the, honestly, there's nothing I feel like that I left out in that video that needs to explain in this one. Uh, but yeah, you know this this video is for the other guys. Uh, you know, on the card, uh, those those guys get their own video. So. It is what it is. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed the predictions. eBay predictions is out. Uh, and see y'all. And uh, see y'all later.